when you exercise, you activate the sympathetic nervous system. Now, the sympathetic nervous system is the part of your nervous system that is the fight or flight response. In the process, the sympathetic nervous system will activate and will send nervous impulses to the liver. The liver will then release all of the stored up glucose that it has in the form of glycogen. Glycogen is what you make in response to eating a meal, especially a high carbohydrate meal, glucose for a rainy day. This is why marathoners carb load before a race, because they're trying to build up their liver glycogen stores so that they can release them during the, re during the race. So when you start exercising, your liver will take that glycogen and turn it into glucose and release it into the bloodstream. That will lead to a rise in your serum glucose. That will lead to a glucose spike. And then that glucose is now available for muscles, for the brain, for the kidneys, to be able to metabolize energy while you are exercising. And it will stay up until either the liver runs out of glycogen, which takes about three hours, or until you stop exercising. In either case, your glucose will then fall precipitously. So if you stop exercising, you will clear that glucose spike very rapidly. If you are on the football gridiron and exercising like crazy, your glucose will start falling precipitously and you will all of a sudden become very tired because you have run out of readily available glucose. This is one reason why the sports drink companies put fructose into the sports drinks, because that's another way to generate glucose when you're exercising. And it's true. If you are a you know, gridiron athlete, an elite athlete, that fructose in that sports drink will ultimately get converted back into glucose and will help replete the glycogen that your liver has lost. No one else needs the fructose for anything else. But the bottom line is you will clear the glucose spike rapidly because you have stopped exercising.